I know I can see I've been hanging on for a while like you wouldn't believe where I am at the moment I'm in the um, the medical uh, university in Vienna wow and I'm and I'm actually at a packed audience that is talking about psychedelic therapy there must be 200 young people in the building and they're glued to the subject of tripping and it's really cool to see here's the post is the poster of the thing here psychedelic science a paradigm shift so they're talking about using mushrooms and iboga and all sorts of other entities to actually um treat people who have got a problem with life so there's a panel discussion going on for the next two hours ever since i saw you it's been nothing but drug policy and drug speed we've done well we've been going since seven o'clock this morning with the first meeting there's been loads of cannabis side events. We've actually nailed it this time. Um, when we went to the United Nations two years ago, it took us four days to track down the South African ambassador and his delegation. And they found us on the first day this time. So they came up to us and they took the documents and um, we're kind of flavor of the week. It's been really, really cool. That's fantastic. Yeah, so it's been it's been very busy. Last night we in our Airbnb overlooking the River Danube, there were ten nationalities in the house eating Chinese food. It's been pretty trippy. And um, a really funny story. I was explaining how loads of people come up to Fields of Greens were all looking for cannabis oil as medicine because they got cancer or something. And I said to this um, Argentinian guy, you wouldn't believe it, but nobody's ever come up to me at Fields of Greens for all in ten years and said I've been smoking weed for 30 years and I've got cancer. And I said, you know, people who smoke loads of weed don't even have a doctor. And I said to him, have, have you got a doctor? He said, I am a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so he's actually, he's actually a cannabis therapist in Buenos Aires. And he wow. smokes his brains out all the time in his, in his therapy room. And he expects his patients to do the same too. So he uses psilocybin cannabis and music in the same in the same space as therapy and, and you know even we've got a bed for the night in Buenos Aires when we get there one day so that would be there's amazing. been some there's been some really weird stuff going on because you wouldn't believe it and Sacra here and the head of the Hawks is here what? and it looks together yeah it looks like it looks like they're in bed together as well which is what we kind of presumed long ago yeah. Yeah. Like it wasn't obvious at all well they seem to be in bed with each other and the way that it's worded in the documents is the who the delegation is from south africa sacra are actually part of law enforcement that's the wording that they put so this is fucked up stuff and we're going to write a blog post about it. We've already um, released a couple of videos about it. And uh, I've got more videos to come of exactly what was said and how. Because in the South African delegation, when it's the plenary session, we have to, and, and every country tells the session of the world um, exactly what they're going to do about drug policy. It was SAPRA that spoke for the government. What? So that was really yeah, no, Sapra spoke on behalf of the South African government. That's really, really good. Whilst it's being investigated well. by the South African government for corruption. Yeah, how unfair is that? Yeah. Um, yeah, all of that. that. And we, the, the, the bottom line is um, the, the lady that was from Sapra that did all the reporting, um, that did, did, did a present, she presented a, a, a prepared speech. Mm -hmm. She has got a diplomatic tag, so she is part of the, 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 the South African Commission somehow. But it's really weird in this thing about diplomats and non-profit companies like Bill mm -hmm. for all that there's like a corporation yeah. and the head of South Africa's narcotics cops, you know, fucks. Mm -hmm. So, so do you get an I'm opportunity doing. to also speak in front of those people and highlight to the world exactly what assholes they are and how they abuse yeah, our human rights every day? That would be a good point, but I'm, I assure you, Joe, that this isn't the place to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's always the place to do it, though, especially in front of the whole world. Well, if it wasn't for the fact that, you know, Myrtle and uh, Warren in East London 
mm. took the opportunity to tell a perfectly normal cannabis um, conference about the cops and arrests and nailed the MEC, yes. we wouldn't have had that headline. Exactly. So that's what activism is, but there's some protocols in this part of the world you don't want to fuck around with these people. The United Nations is another whole piece, and there's loads of rules and stuff, but yeah. it's been very cool to come back. This is now the, the fourth time we've done this, and um, we're now we're getting known, and now South Africa's on the map, and people know all our books, everybody knows about um, the, the design outcomes and the manifesto and people's plans. We've got two more interviews tomorrow. We've been interviewed three times for three different continents. Sure. So it's been, been really cool, really busy. Um, Tony Button's with us. He came. Um, so he's been working the room as well from a hemp point of view. It's very, very cool. Very cool. Into the Because you know when you got that, you got the sign that says free the weed, free the weed. Mm -hmm. the, government, the government doesn't know what that means, free the weed. So now when you get to a place like the United Nations and they bullshit around for 50 years writing documents and shit, the free the weed bit, I'm sorry, it's going to take quite a long time because these guys are in no, in no hurry whatsoever. No. We all came here. We all came here for a, a change in the classification so they could use it for medicine. We, we were told that the vote is going to be now two years ago, there was no vote, and now this year, the vote, when you get here, they've decided to postpone it until December. And it all sounds really shit when you, when you first hear it, but when you know about the geopolitics of it, and you know about China and Russia and Brazil, and Iran and all of these crazy ass places. We, they were all going to vote no. So there's been all of this diplomacy going around for them to just abstain and not say. So it sounds like really shit news, but on the big scheme of things, it's, it's good news. And South Africa's ambassador actually stood up in the plenary session with a prepared speech and said, We endorse everything to do with the reclassification, reclassification of cannabis for medical purposes. So that was a massive breakthrough because yeah, it's the it's only not. African country, the only African country so far to have done it. And we sat next to this crazy Nigerian dude in traditional dress yesterday. He said, we are not going to legalize any cannabis in any form because all the bad guys make money out of it. And if we legalize it, then there'll be more weed and they'll make more money and then they'll be more powerful and there'll be more insurgents. And we all looked at this guy and said, where's that your fucking excuse? <coughs> Anyway, so there's, you'll never get consensus in the room. There's 11 African countries that are voting. And, you know, like one of them's from the Middle East. The other, the Angola's not. Uh, we, we've spoken to people from Ethiopia. It's like this hopeless basket case of fundamental Christian fuckwits. It really is. It's fucking out to us. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we, there's 11 countries, so maybe if they vote for the block, it might go six to five, but it's down to the wire. So everybody's quite pleased that there isn't a vote right now, so we can do some more diplomacy to try and yeah, sort it out a little bit. It, it's a pain Africa in the ass. We, we, Merchel and I have actually got a Merchel and I have actually got a complex now because every time we book a ticket to Europe, they cancel the boats. So we think it's us. Get someone else to book your tickets next time. <laughs> 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 so, um, how was it going in South Africa? You've got, you've got electricity going, so it's a little bit, little had, bit late starting. Yeah, we've had some electricity. We had some other issues that didn't want us to start today, but we we persevere, you know. We're not very good at giving up over this side. We don't, we don't Never. know how to no, stop but, giving, stop trying, yeah. If we well, knew how to give up, we would have given up on things a long time ago, wouldn't we? We wouldn't be sitting in this position. Years and big up, to the, uh, big up to the green session for coming. Thank you guys for fitting in on the couch tonight. Well done for making the effort because it's a long way to get to the pop box sometimes. Yeah. Um, it is a bit I'm, of just gonna, yeah. I'm just going to swap cameras so you can see. So that is 150 people in one of the oldest <laughs> hey and that's um that is a lithuanian you're still there you guys yeah, yeah we're still yeah. here we're watching yeah. quietly <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a lithuanian cannabis activist who just said hi 
and he's my best friend because I have to take him back to my car because he left all his weed there last night. <laughs> 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 I took him, I brought, I, I, brought, um, I, I brought a whole bunch of weed from the Eastern Cape, from all of the growers down there. We, when we went last, this time last week, we were broadcasting from the Cannabis Club in East London. Yeah. Those guys gave Murph and I a shitload of glass bottles from the weed. And we took a, a bunch from each one and put them, stashed them and brought them to Vienna to show everybody the standard of South African weed. And you can imagine how popular we are. Yes. Everybody, everybody's following us around for the Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> the Christ knows what. <laughs> so I've got a fully, so I've got a fully stacked pipe full of weed at all times at the United Nations. It's, uh -huh. it's kind of cool when you're when you're an activist and yes. you can get weed into into the fucking the bowels of the beast. Well, you're expected so, um, to. <laughs> eh? You're expected to. I know it's, it's, it is an expectation, and um, all I've got to say to the people in the Eastern Cape Cape is, that is rock and roll. Fuck the standard of the weed we got from the Eastern Cape from that club is fucking excellent. It's better than any weed you would find anywhere in a coffee shop or monster down. I brought about 15 grams with me because in Europe I've got a thousand rand a day drug habit because the weed's fucking stupid. A little bit I've expensive. got a weed. I just thought of something, but you know what? In Austria, we're not allowed THC, and only have hemp. So, um, this is hemp, and it's from a hemp shop, and it's got less than 0.2% THC in it. It's called Blueberry Hose, and it's 170 rand a gram. And it doesn't do and when I, I bought it to bring back to you guys to do a shit or lit on it, because I think I know what the fucking answer is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm why sure the fuck anybody? So it's like this, um, it's this really shitty bush weed looking stuff with no THC in it. So it's the most expensive non weed I've ever bought in my life. I've got to do it. We'll bring it back home and we'll bust it on the pipe. We'll give it to Dan to roll with the pipe, three grams of BHO around. It's just <laughs> 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 so th th this time next week I'm going to be at the Dabadu um, underground concentrates cup in Barcelona, and then we go to Spanabis. So um, at that point I'm going to read. I'm going to get hold of you this time next week, and by that time I should be surrounded by about a hundred people in an undisclosed underground bunker somewhere in Barcelona with some of the world's greatest dabs, so that's something to look forward to. Oh, if I remember, nice. yeah, no, it's great. We're very privileged. It's like, sometimes it's really good fun being the Dakar couple, and other times it's just fucked up, you know, join the queue and all of that shit. Yeah, that but, um, Sometimes it's really cool to get a pass to just about anywhere. So um, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to go back into the science. What Enjoy. I'm going to do is... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the room without speaking, and I'll put the, I'll flip the camera out the way, and then um, you'll get an idea of how many people are in the room. It dates back to the late 18th century. It's wrought iron, and it's like the original place where they used to do Victorian dissection to body to medicine shit. And now, 150 years later, they're talking about fucking LSD, and it's just amazing. Yes. I wish I was there. I'm actually, like, for the first time, deeply, deeply, deeply jealous. Like, that's one room I'd like to sit in, especially for that talk. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the other thing is, um, we've been trying hard for three years to get another security unit in spring. It's called EcoSoc status. We've got, we've got a status as drug policy, but now we need to, we've been trying to get another status that will allow us to bring 12 people with us. So our big mission next year is to bring 12 delegates from Africa to do a side event about South, about Southern African weed and how it is. We actually brought a lady from the Sutu with us this time, um, a lawyer that does a lot of policy who's trying to look out the, after the interests of the Sutu, because as you know, Canopy and all the rest of the dudes are in there. And, um, you know, Medigrow is one of the few people that are actually growing. They've already been taken to the labor board and paying less than minimum wage. So she's here to try and stop all of that shit and give cannabis back to the 
pursuit. So there's all of this multi pronged yeah. yeah. There's tons of things going on all the time from all over the world. And it's super cool to network. It. It's really hard work. It is really fucking expensive. It's like 120 rounds for a cappuccino. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, a lot I of things has to be done for this. So every time, if you go out for a decent dinner and you treat yourself to like the steak and stuff, you are going to pay four hundred grand. So the, the cheapest pay, the cheapest place to actually do anything is in the cafeteria in the bowels of the United Nations. They've got like a subsidised kitchen there. So we all pig out at the UN before we go out. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't they have garage pies there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to open the door, I'm going to switch cameras, and I'm not going to talk anymore because they're doing the whole thing. I'll do it once round, and then I'm going to switch the zoom up, and you get on with the show, I'm going to listen. Right. Okay. Thanks, George. Great talking to you, guys. Thanks so, so much. much. Um, so we're kind of one of the first what I would give to be in that.